stops. It's endless. Every time I come over here, I'm like, That's endless. this is amazing. Yeah, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another video. We're back. Back where it all started. The great, <laughs> the legendary Tim Pierce. I was going to California, and I'm like, I've got to go to Tim's house. It has been far, far too long. And uh, Tim is one of the real inspirations on all that I've done from this point on. I remember coming up as a wee lad to your house being like, oh my God, somehow this has got to work itself into my world. And it's been a constant inspiration ever since, so thank you. Well, I could say the same about you, <laughs> and uh, you helped me more than anyone else on the planet with my new endeavors, which I love. I love being in this space, doing YouTube and making guitar more of a fun hobby than a, uh, a profession. Right. I'm really <laughs> enjoying this new chapter, and, and you really I would alter you oh you're not <laughs> anyways so I'm gonna leave Tim's links down below his master class I I'm part of it it's freaking fantastic and you're not lit you're not gonna get a better uh, well-rounded approach to the guitar and and the the thing I love most about you and always loved most about you is it's always about a song right Right. And that's the one thing I think in this space, it's so easy to, to bring it into like, woo, woo, and it's like, we all play guitar because there was a song that we loved that happened to mm -hmm. have a good guitar. Well, and the thing I say too much, but I'll say it one more time. One more time. Is that I grew up in the 60s and yeah. my love of music comes from Top 40 Radio okay. on the AM radio. So, and then that morphed into hearing like, I remember being in a bathroom at my friend's house and there was a little clock radio with a speaker, I swear, this big. <laughs> and Heartbreaker by Led Zeppelin oh was God. coming out of it. And I'm sitting there looking at it with my eyes wide open going, why does this sound like the heaviest, biggest thing in the entire world? It was the songs. Yeah. And, and rock got super heavy in the late 60s. But even before that, I yeah. was into Peter, Paul, and Mary, and Otis Redding, oh, and the yeah. Beatles, and Glenn Campbell. I was into every song on the radio I yeah. heard. Petula Clark, Downtown, you know, I mean, hit songs on the radio. Yeah. And then the guitar would peek out. Yeah. And it'd be playing these cool parts. And yep. then the guitar solos started to appear. Mm -hmm. And I was totally into late 60s rock, early ZZ Top, yeah. Wishbone Ash, Johnny oh, Winter, yeah. oh, yeah. I mean, Eric Clapton, Cream, do and you, then of course Hendrix. Oh, do you remember the first uh, solo you heard that was like, oh my God, what is that? Well, I mean, uh, all along the Watchtower put yeah. me in the strat. I was walking on air you when I You almost said Stratosphere. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> It wasn't the stratosphere. It was literally off the, you know, six feet off the road. But even like Neil Young, Cinnamon Girl, that's oh, a totally. one-note guitar yeah. solo. Uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, those guitar solos. Yeah. I mean, it was everywhere, yeah. but it was all in the context of songs with great yeah. vocals. And so that's what I wish was happening today. It's Absolutely. okay that it's not as much. Yeah. It is. You just have to find it. You yeah. have to go get it. But I just don't necessarily gravitate towards just all guitar all the time. So okay. that's all. Well, that's we're all. here, and mm -hmm. we, we know what your wish is. So what would you think, what would you say to people, the three things they need to concentrate on the most? Well. Because obviously we hear people, jam, but that doesn't really do anything to make you a better player. Yeah, I would say get in a situation where you can develop a pocket. Okay. You can do that by playing over your favorite songs. If you put okay. up any Motown song on Spotify yeah. and start playing along, you're going to start getting there. But then on the weekend, wherever you can, get in a room with musicians yeah. and play, and you know, play with a drummer, you know, and and then get a taste of what it's like to get in front of an audience with that configuration, with that band, so that you see what people respond to. Yeah. Now here's the other part of that: we, I, and I think you too, we always imagined our music uh, actually being popular with. Lots of women and wives and girlfriends. Of course. And the general public. <laughs> Makes the world go around. So it's very different what a person in an audience responds to than a musician in the audience responds to. Oh and a lot God, of times I think day. musicians are just playing for other musicians. And we didn't, I had nothing to do with why I wanted to get on stage. It yeah. was the wives and the girlfriends yeah. and the general public. It was the non-musicians. So that's the one thing. Get out there and see what they respond to. And then at a certain point, you realize you don't 
have to be the virtuoso anymore. No. You can play cool stuff, yeah. fun stuff, yep. simple stuff, and, and people respond, and so that—that's what I would do to experiment yeah. with that, because maybe none of us are going to get to the point of our heroes that we love yeah. and our virtuosos. We love these guys, you know, I, all I, the all the, the dudes you know and that yeah. I know, but you don't have to be that to have a really lot of fun with music over your whole life. Isn't it funny the uh, the Chuck Berry lick? It works over everybody, and and it's like the simplest thing ever. But that's like <clears throat> a crowd's always going to respond to that. And great riffs, you know, yeah. all the Zeppelin riffs, oh you know, God, the, even the Eagles, you can't play their music online, yeah. but, you know, like like Life in the Fast Lane, I mean, you know, Funk 49, you yeah. know, it's just the, all these great guitar riffs, yeah. you know, it's just, it's, <laughs> that's where I'm at. So, yeah. anyway, I was thinking about some rhythm guitar parts, and okay. you, you had expressed an interest in that, and I, I'm a huge Deep Purple fan, oh. and so I found out that Richie Blackmore actually was playing a 335 up until the point he saw Jimi Hendrix, okay. and then he switched to a Strat permanently. Oh, but the, I found out one of my favorite songs by Deep Purple is "Hush," oh, and it's yeah. their like like late late sixties thing. And the rhythm part's so cool is. Okay, so it's this bounce, like when you're playing rhythm guitar, there's a swing in there and a bounce in there. To me, that is the coolest thing. It's yeah. just the coolest thing. And then it reminded me of one of my other favorite guitar parts in the world, which is Magic Carpet Ride. Okay. Got the organ. Right. Now the guitar part that happens next is so cool, and you don't even hear it unless you like pay attention to it. Right. And it's those little things that to me are super, super brilliant. Yeah. And then that led me on another chase, and I was going, okay. I remember David Williams, he has passed away now, but he was Michael Jackson's guitar player. Michael called him the doctor. And so he actually was brought front and center on a lot of these songs. And beyond that, this is David Williams. And the thing about rhythm guitar, and uh, these these amazing practitioners, well, they have a swing and they have a pocket. Mm -hmm. But it's also a constant motor. So what you want to do is you want your hand to be moving the whole time, and you're either choosing to pick a note or to pick a muted note or just to pick air. Okay. But it's constantly going. Yeah. And you hear on that song, he's constantly... Yeah. And I even found, I was looking at uh, Rock With You. So when, on the record, you just hear. But what he's actually doing is. Oh, because it gets hidden in that. And that's where the pocket comes from. I found a little uh, a YouTube video of him sitting on the couch doing uh -huh. it by himself. So it's all that in-between stuff that gives you the pocket. Okay. So develop that. Okay. The the muted, constant thing. And it's very comforting. You never... Well, and you know, it's interesting, too, what you've done this whole time is I think a lot of people forget that you can take the... the make the note duration shorter. Oh, yeah. Right? Because you're yeah. when you're doing the bounce, you're lifting your hand off the whole time to, like, yeah. make it really super snappy. Yeah. Yeah. Right, but then the other, it's interesting because the other parts in the song, then, then it spreads out. And you've, you're one of the people that I, that really hammered that into me when I started doing this. Is like the the dynamics and the things that you want to do. If something's loud, then go soft. Or if something's choppy, then make it. You know, like that. All that stuff, I think, um, really helps the arc of the song. And like you're able to build or drop out. Like you were, I remember you telling me like first two don't play anything. Yeah. 
you know, and then just ease your way back in. Because then when that chorus hits for the second time, yeah. it's like, boom, you know, yeah. and it's all those little. So do you um, show them a little, can, can you kind of just. Ex- well, the thing that happens, right like you, you spoke about loud and soft. My corollary for that with the right hand is sometimes you want to really smack it hard with your right hand. Okay. Sounds good. It's like a tennis player hitting the ball, right? But other times you want to go super soft. Mm-hmm. And then you want to start choosing all of these levels in between the hardest and the softest. Sometimes it's great to smack it. Other times it's great to do really gentle stuff. And then with the left hand is what you talked about. You're constantly lifting up your fingers and muting the notes, and it feels good. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is it feels good to have your fingers sitting against this string, Mm -hmm. and you're smacking the string over here, and you can feel it. Yeah. And, you know, I've never really thought about it until now. It actually feels really good. (laughs) Take a little massage for your fingertip. You kind of get hooked on it. Yeah. Those are some of the f- most fun things to play. Those bubble parts, so awesome. absolutely, yeah. So, um, can you show them? And because you're you're moving around a little bit, doing your parts, can you show them one chord in four notes that you can mess around and do this? What you're doing, like so, if they wanted to like the Hendrix chord, and here's four notes. Here's one oh, chord sure. and a couple of sure. Yeah, so let's they can... choose E because it's you know it's it's easy. Okay. So if like. This is an E minor 9 chord, which is one of my favorite chords. No, it just so happens it's part of Rock With You. But separate from that, I've always loved an E minor 9. It's also this chord. It's here. Now, the reason I love it is because the minor 9 is the color note that I would use in a part. Okay. So if I'm in E minor... Yeah. And it just makes it a little bit jazzy. Yeah, I'm not yeah, a jazz yeah. player, but that, yeah. you know, and even in this part, I... he goes up to it. But we're in E, so the four notes I would use: the tonic, the flat seven, the five, the four, and then the nine. So you said three or four. Here's yeah. five. That's the you call now. You get one extra note. Yeah, and so the fifth <laughs> note I would use would be the uh, ninth. And you can simplify and just go. And the other thing that, that I like to talk about is there's kind of two ways to do funk rhythm. And that's the big stroke and the small one. So you need to be able to do this wide strum and muting all the six, you know, mm-hmm. slapping all six strings, but muting over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Use the E minor nine. And you need to be able to shrink it. Okay, so can you do that same thing that you're doing now and then just pretend you're having fun and just... Like go wherever you where yeah, wherever sure. it feels natural. Why don't you help me by just playing anything? Just start a groove, and okay. I'll I'll provide. And then double stops. It's endless. Every time I come over here, I'm like, "That's endless." This is amazing. Okay, so make sure you check out his. You, it's like mandatory. You get 14 days free, right? Yeah, that's how we do it. Because you know, I want people to go. Okay, I like this, but I don't want to pay for it. And they, you just opt out. I love. We have anybody, everybody in the master class. Opt out, dude. Come on, don't set it up. Everybody who's in it wants to be there because they've had two weeks to test it out. So we're we're good that way. so. So. 
it's it's like a thousand videos plus right now, right? It's almost two thousand. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you can't figure it out in two thousand videos, <laughs> I'll probably take up golf at that point. But the cool thing <clears> is, uh, he's very humble. He's never going to tell you all the stuff he's done. But you've heard him on the radio a bazillion times, and you. Again, I'm going to go back to this. Out of all the real pros I've ever worked with, you over anybody <clears throat> always is the like, no, it's the song. Like you right. you can play. He yeah. can burn like nobody's business, but you never do it unless that is needed. Yeah. And so the restraint, the use of effects, all of that stuff is covered. The rhythm, the lead, everything, how to track, like everything you can imagine is available and it's really, really, really good. So Thank you. check it out and I swear you will be a better guitar player. I'll leave Thank the you. link below. Um, and then, you know, check out his YouTube channel for God's sakes, because that's awesome as well. As is yours, we'll keep going. All right, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.